A quick shout out before today's episode begins to Isaac Wooten, who is my newest Patreon supporter. He has requested I play a little bit of Boston today. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a very beautiful Les Paul Standard that was a dealer custom order in 1993. Now what that means is somebody either went to a store and asked for this guitar to be custom ordered for them, built to their specs, or a dealer was like, you know what, I want a limited edition run just for me. These are the specs I want. Gibson, make it for me. The 90s are often referred to as the Goodwood era for Les Pauls. It's when the current owner bought Gibson, and after a few years of research and development, and a few failed attempts at some crazy 80s looking guitars, he finally struck gold by hitting the Les Paul Classic line, and then later on the reissue line. So the quality control on 90s Gibsons are usually pretty good. They're typically great players, and you can find some really nice looking ones out there. So you can tell this was a special order of some kind because it has a decal on the back of the headstock here. This decal reads Custom Shop Edition. Now, if you're not familiar with the whole custom shop thing, is this does not mean this was made in the custom shop. This simply means that it was a limited edition of some nature that either Gibson did or a custom order. It does not mean it's a custom shop guitar. I see this all the time. People see this stamp and they instantly describe the guitar as this is custom shop. This is a 1993 Gibson Les Paul. The custom shop did not exist yet. It almost did. It's definitely been thought of. I believe it's late 1993 and 1994 when Gibson finally opened the custom shop and they started doing actual reissues. Now the very early R8s and R9s, the 58 and 59 reissues, do still retain this custom shop edition stamp. So this stamp was actually first used in the early 80s. Things like the Spotlight Special had them, the Super Custom, which I've done some reviews on as well. These were basically just signifying that this guitar was extra special. So what is so special about this Les Paul Standard? Here's what makes it special. It is a factory bird's eye top. What that means is you have like these little blisters in the wood and some people really do enjoy that look. Whereas others, they're not as thrilled with it. This is a three piece bird's eye maple top and you don't see bird's eye on Les Pauls too often. Now there are a few different runs of bird's eye top Les Pauls. I believe I did a Would You Rock or Not series on I believe it was a later 90s, early 2000s version. So this is not the only bird's eye top Les Paul that you'll find. The other thing that is special about this guitar is the finish. This is not your traditional wine red. This one more so reminds me of Dark Wine Burst. That was a very shortly lived finish around this time frame in the early to mid 90s. Most people that have a Dark Wine Burst custom don't even realize what the actual color is called. I see them get listed all the time incorrectly as just wine red. This one doesn't quite have the dark outline of the burst, but at certain angles you do see it, but I think it's just the way that the light reflects on this guitar. Again, you have a three-piece maple top on this one, which is kind of uncommon. They kind of stopped doing that whole three-piece top shenanigans in like the 70s and 80s, but they brought it back for this one. Originally, this had two 57 Classics. This one actually has more modern 57 Classics and a 57 Classic Plus in it. It has your standard Nashville style bridge. This is not an ABR1 like historic type deal. You have a mahogany back and a mahogany neck and a very nice dark rosewood fretboard. The thing with this guitar is the bird's eye top really doesn't strike me that much. It's not overly apparent and I kind of like that. I'm not the biggest fan of bird's eye unless it's on like a maple finish. For me, this guitar is all about the finish and the neck. The neck profile is like that perfect almost 59 shape. If you want that vintage woody bitey Les Paul sound, this guitar has it. I do give this one my ultimate seal of approval. And I don't give that to every guitar. I know if you've been watching my channel for a long time, I've maybe said that about maybe four or five other guitars. 
but this one is a fantastic player. So in conclusion, this was a guitar that was custom ordered either by a end user or a dealer, and it just kind of has an interesting flair to it. Now that we've learned a little bit about this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. Our clean tones come from a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. Our dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP 1C. <laughs> has a really good weight to it at 9 pounds 4.2 ounces. Now that we've heard how this bird's eye Les Paul standard sounds, let's go ahead and look at its condition. If you're not interested in that, that is the rest of the video, so we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Alright, so this guitar is actually in pretty good shape. It's been lightly played, it has some random finish checking just from, you know, going into hot and cold situations. But overall, I would say this thing is in respectable, almost collectible condition. You can see the face of the headstock does have some scratches and general wear and tear kind of in the corners right here. But it has that very early 90s Gibson logo. You can see you've got some light edge wear, some scuffing and light scratches and impressions. But overall, it is still a respectable condition. The truss rod works just fine. You still have your original nut on here truss rod cover reads standard. The frets are in good shape. They do show some very minor flattening in some areas, but definitely nothing you'll have to worry about for a while. The fretboard when I got it was very light colored, but just after one quick treatment of some lemon oil, it really made this one darken up very nicely to match the finish. And again, this one kind of has that 59 styled neck profile. It's a little slimmer than that, but it's definitely a very nice feeling neck. The face of the guitar has a lot of polishing scratches and just minor swirls, but no major impressions for the most part. You can see there's a few where your arm would rest there. And this area right here is kind of a mineral streak in the top. I like this kind of stuff because even if this guitar gets stolen and they scratch your serial number out, that is still a key identifying feature. And again, you have a beautiful bird's eye maple top in there. There's a little bit of quiltiness to it as well, but mainly just bird's eye, especially in this middle piece. This guitar is all original except for the pickups, but they are a similar style, just slightly hotter. Now up here on the cutaway horn, you can see right there where the light is. You can see right there, there is kind of an impression ding 
but that's probably the worst thing on the top. Now the neck pickup does not have the patent applied for decal on it. Those are very famous for falling off. Just if you scrape them with your nail, they just chip off like that. However, the identifying features are all there. I'm fairly confident that it's still the 57 Classic, and that one might be original to the guitar. Now the bridge is a 57 Classic Plus. So that's just a slightly hotter 57 Classic, and I don't suggest changing it out. These are perfect pickups. They're pretty much the same thing that was originally in it anyways, but they sound killer in this guitar. Now I do want to say that this is kind of a, a pick guard on type guitar, because the three piece top, it kind of makes it look weird if you take the guard off, as you can see here. But with the pick guard on, I really I do dig the look of this guitar. You can see there's quite a bit of wear to the gold on the tail piece, as well as on the bridge with some light pitting. Back of the headstock here, serial number is 9049-3399 which makes that a 1993 49th day of the year. So this is a very early 1993. So definitely not the custom shop because it didn't exist yet. You have your original Gibson Deluxe Cluson style tuners, and you've got some light dings around the side here. Just some minor edge wear. Again, you have the custom shop edition stamp. Doesn't mean it was made in the custom shop, just means it was a special order or a limited edition run. The neck's in good shape. You do have a few minor impressions like right here, but for the most part, it's in good shape. You don't really notice any of these light dings while playing the guitar. The back of the guitar is also in pretty respectable shape. You've got some light wear to it, some minor buckle worming, but still respectable. You do have brown back plates on here, and you can see there is a ding right there, kind of by the input jack. That's probably one of the worst dings on the guitar. Just some minor scratches and wear and tear. There's also some wear along the sides. I mean, this was not a case queen by any means. It was definitely lightly played. You can see a ding right there, but still very well respected. So this one might not necessarily be for a collector, but if you like to play guitars, you know, that have been lightly played, this is definitely one that might pique your interest. Because it's got a somewhat limited edition nature to it, but it's not so over the top that you don't want to take it out. I do want to make note of a, a small impression right here on the bottom of the guitar. And it is really hard to see but there are some minor finish checks stemming from the knobs. Which probably means it took a slight little bump at one point in time to cause those lines, but once again, strictly in the finish, not an actual crack. There are also a few other minor finish check lines, like around the edges, but in these bright lights, I really cannot see them. So we'll do a quick black light test here. You can see everything's looking good on the headstock, no finish touch-ups or anything. Just your average light wear and tear. Here is the body under black light. Everything is glowing the way it should. Uh, I guess it's possible the knobs could have been changed, but you know, being a 90s Les Paul, they don't necessarily glow every time. Back of the headstock, you can see there's no breaks, cracks, or repairs or anything like that. And there's no like finish worn off the neck, but you can see those small light dings. The back of the guitar looks like you have a little bit of stand rash, like a guitar stand was leaning up against it right here for a while. I don't see that in regular lighting, but you can definitely see it under black light here. And these sides of the guitar just have some very light wear once again. But as far as the finish goes, there are no touch-ups or repairs to this guitar. It passes the black light test. This guitar does come with its original Gibson USA brown case. As you can see, it's a little bit worn. You've got some uh, storage wear and maybe some light gigging wear. But overall, the case does still protect the guitar. I have one, two, three, four latches total and a locking combo latch. I'm guessing it is set at zero, 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 because it does pull out. But the handle is kind of broken on this one. Right now it looks good, but this comes off, and then at that point it'll just kind of fall off. So in order to fix this, what you need 
is like a, a staple gun of some sort to uh, slide that back in and then staple it right there. So the inside of the case you can see right here it used to have a case shroud but those things are kind of annoying so somebody just cut them off and unfortunately it's not in the case or anything. But this is your 90s brown and pink interior case. They were kind of designed to look like the Lifton's but be a lot more protective with additional heel support and a double neck rest. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this custom ordered bird's eye top Les Paul standard, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglis, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Thank you troglites for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.